Well, hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Let's Play Forge. Last time we uh, fought against an opponent that used a lot of burn damage cards against us and we did not have that much of a good run. I don't know man, this is quite difficult. This time around we'll be playing against an AI named the GW Company Heliod. Okay, let's keep this first hand. Now he starts out the game by summoning a walking ballista, which is a 0 slash 0 construct artifact creature which has the effects of walking ballista enters the battlefield with x plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And uh, for paying 4 mana put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on walking ballista and remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from walking ballista to do 1 damage to target creature or player. Okay. Let's start out by summoning a Bitter Blade Warrior. So uh, he uses his two. Wait. I don't know what he's doing. Ah, he used the, the plus one plus one counter which already existed on, uh, on Walking Ballista to do one damage to me, I guess. Yeah, to me. And now he summons a Noble Hierarch, which is a 0 slash 1 human druid creature, which has the effects of Exalted, whenever, which means that whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus 1 plus 1 until the end of turn. And also it has the effect of, for tapping it, add a green mana, a white mana, or a blue mana to your man mana pool. Okay, interesting. Let's summon a giant... Oh, no, we cannot summon a giant spider just yet. Let's... Uh, Let's summon a Feral Prowler for the time being, and now let's attack him with our Bitter Blade Warrior without exerting it, because I don't need it exerted. We did some damage to him, now he is summoning a Ranger Captain of Eos, which is a 3 slash 3 human soldier ranger creature, which has the effects of when Ranger Captain of Eos enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with mana value of one or less, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle. To sacrifice Ranger Captain of Eos to have uh, your... Uh, to, to have the effect of your opponents can't cast non-creature non spells this turn. Interesting. Now let's summon a giant spider. It has something to block him with. And now let's attack him with our Bitter Blade Warrior and as well with our Feral Prowler. While exerting our Bitter Blade Warrior in the process. He will block uh, pro most likely our Feral Prowler with his uh, uh, Captain of Dias. But since Feral Prowler died in the battle, I get to draw another card, which is another F Feral Prowler. That's fine. Now he casts a Switcheroo, which means exchange control of two target creatures. So he took my Giant Spider and he gave me back in exchange a, no a Noble Hierarch. And now he uses Noble Hierarch's uh, ability to get more mana. Okay, that's unfortunate. Let's summon uh, Bitter Bull Sharpshooters because that's usually a pretty good card. Now let's end our turn. And now he summons a Soul Separator, which is an artifact that has the effects of, for being tapped, uh, sacrificing Soul Separator and also paying 5 mana, exile target creature card from your graveyard. Put a token onto the battlefield that's a, that's a copy of that card, except it's 1 slash 1, it's a spirit in addition to its other types, and it has flying. Put a black zombie creature token onto the battlefield with power equal to that card's power and toughness, equal to that card and toughness uh, equal to that card's uh, toughness. Okay. Let's summon another Feral Prowler. And an Elite Cat Warrior. And yeah, that's about that's pretty much it. Let's Alpha Strike him while exerting our Bitter Blade Warrior as well, because we can. He stopped us with his Giant Spider. That's fine, I don't mind that. Let's summon a second giant spider. Let's use an ambuscade with our bitter blade 
bitter bow sharpshooter to destroy his giant ah no i do not have the mana for that never mind let's just alpha strike him he casts an ethereal ambush immediately to which is an instant it has the effect of manifest the top the top two cards of your library to manifest a card put it onto the battlefield face down as a two slash two creature turn it face up any time for, for its mana cost if it's a creature card okay and now he blocked me with everything that he has let's see how we're going to do this so uh, i'm not interested in beatable sharpshooter that much although you know what, yeah, I will destroy his giant spider first, because I think his giant spider is absolutely terrible. Now he gets a Kodama's Might, which is an arcane instant that has the effects of target creature gets plus two plus two until the end of turn. So he used that on his giant spider to destroy my creature. Oh, that sucks. Okay, that's fine. Let's... Uh Yeah, let's use Ambuscade on our uh, Bitterblade Warrior to destroy his uh, Ranger Captain of Eos. And now let's use Ambuscade again on our Bitterblade Warrior to destroy his Giant Spider. And now let's Alpha Strike him with everything we have, including our Bitterblade Warrior. And now he, I don't think he's going to have that much to do. Okay, so he lost most of his cards and now he casts a collected company, which is an instant that has the effect of look up, look at the top six cards of your library, put up two creature cards with converted mana cost of three or less from among them onto the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So he chose another ranger captain of Eos and the Skyclave app apparition. And uh, yeah, my noble hierarch has been removed. That's unfortunate. So this fucking sucks. Let's use a cartouche of strength on our feral prowler to destroy his. Uh... Let's start with his skyclave apparition. Let's end our turn. Now we have an illusion token on our side of the field. And he summons another Skyclave Apparition. Let's use an Ambuscade on our illusion token. Oh no, wait, why can't I do that? Ah, uh, yes I can. And let's destroy his Ranger Captain of Eos. Okay, that's good. Now let's Alpha Strike him. He's in a very bad position. I think he's going to lose. Honestly. Let's Alpha Strike him once again, he will block me with his uh, creature, and now he puts down a Prismatic Vista, which is a land that has the effect of, for being for, for being tapped, paying one life and sacrificing P Prismatic Vista, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, and shuffle it. And now he's attacking me with everything he has. Let's put a Shed Weakness on our uh, Illusion token. And now let's just alpha strike him with everything that he has, and we finally won. And we removed from his deck a Conclave Mentor, which is quite nice. So we finally won a match, let's see if we can keep this up. I have a nice selection of stuff, he puts down a Prismatic Vista immediately. I think, let's put down a Forest card. He summons a Conclave Mentor, which is a 2 slash 2 Centaur Cleric creature, which has the effects of if one or more plus 1 plus 1 counters would be put on a creature you control, that many plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 counters are put on that creature instead. When Conclave Mentor dies, you gain, you gain life equal to its power. Interesting. Okay, let's not do anything because we do not have anything to do just yet. He's attacking me with his Conclave Mentor and now he's summoning a Ranger Captain of Eos. Okay. And the top card of his library is a Noble Hierarch. Okay. So we, we are in quite a shitty position for the time being, but uh, I think this is fine. Let's summon a Prowling Silco card for the time being, since we really need to have something to defend ourselves with. 
And now he's attacking me with his Ranger Captain and Vias, as well as this other creature. I don't know. I think I would rather block his uh, Ranger uh, Captain of Eos with my Prowling Serpo Pard. He summoned a Triton Wave Rider now, which is a 3 3, -three Merfolk Wizard creature, which has the effect of Constellation, which means whenever an, an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, Triton Wave Rider gains flying until the end of turn. Interesting. We do not have the means to fuck with him just yet, so let's uh, let's cast the roots on his Triton Wave Rider for the time being to compromise it. Roots means that he will be ta he will remain tapped for the remainder of the game until my roots card is destroyed at least. He summons a Skyclave Apparition, which is a 2 slash 2 core spirit creature, which has the effects of when Skyclave Apparition enters the battlefield, exile up to one target non land, non token permanent you don't control with converted mana cost of 4 or less. When Skyclave Apparition leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner creates an, uh, an X slash X blue illusion creature token where X is the converted mana cost of the exiled creature. Interesting. And he removed. He somehow removed my. Ah, he exiled my roots card. That's bullshit. So now I can summon a Bramble of Behemoth, finally. I finally have the mana to do so. He summons a Ranger Captain of Eos once again. Let's summon a Foreign Elemental. About time that I can do that. And now he's attacking me with literally everything that he has. So this fucking sucks. I think I just lost. Well, we shall see. Let's block his. Uh, yeah, let's block his Triton Wave Rider with our Thorn Elemental. And let's also block his Ranger Captain of Eos with our Bramble with Behemoth. That, that was fucking annoying. Let's summon a Wild Ox. And I'm not going to do anything this turn because I want to be able to block him if, in case he attacks me with everything he has. Once again, like he's doing right now. So let's, uh, yeah, let's block his range of Captain of Eos with my Thorn Elemental. Let's also block his uh, Conclave Mentor with my Bramble with Behemoth. And also his Skyclave Apparition with my Wild Ox. Excellent. So I removed a lot of creatures from his uh, side of the field. I'll also use a Cartesian Strength on my Thorn Elemental to destroy one of his Noble Hierarchs. Now let's just Alpha Strike him with everything that we have. And we fucking won. Fucking finally. About time that we won a match as well. Let's grab a card from the Magic 2014 set. So we, we won from his deck a Noble Hierarch. Quite nice. And we also won a random rare called Devil's Play, which costs uh, one red mana to cast and an, an additional X uh, amount of mana where X is of my choice. It's a sorcery card and it has the effect of Devil's Play, De Devil's Play deals X damage, where X was the number of additional mana I would have used to cast it, to target creature or player. And it also has a flashback cost of uh, free red mana and the X additional mana that I used. And this additional cost is you may cast this card from your graveyard for its flashback cost, then exile it. So I can play this two times, once with its regular cost to deal X damage to, my, to a target creature or a, a target player. And also, once I did that and it gets removed into my graveyard, because I already played it, then I can also, whenever I want, pay the flashback cost, which is an additional cost, just so I can also cast it once again from my graveyard to do the exact same thing twice. And But then it gets exiled. Interesting. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to get in touch with me, I have a Mastodon account as well as a Matrix room that you can join, details of which you can find in the description of this video. And in the meantime, see you next time.